Hey, so it's mid-July, we're in Montana, way up in the mountains, probably about 6,000 feet, something like that. And uh, what that means is it's huckleberry picking time. So all the uh, ants in the ant village, uh, we got told this morning they were driving up here to do huckleberry picking. It is the season, so that's what I'm up here doing. Uh, up here on this slope above us, this is the closest patch you know about. All that undergrowth there, it's all huckleberries. And uh, I got this little pail string hanging around my neck. So these are the berries, just little itty bitty berries, growing low growing bushes. Real slow to pick, but man are they tasty. So, been here about an hour. Already picked this. What is this, like 32 ounces? So, not the, not the quickest picking in the world, but they are delicious. That's why they're about 10 bucks a pound at the uh, farmer's market, but they're free for us. So I'm going to keep on picking and hopefully fill up another one of these. Hi there once again. Uh, despite all that talk in the last video about staying motivated and uh, keeping progress going, uh, yesterday I didn't do much but uh, read this book all day. Uh, it was a really good book. It has a lot of stuff in it about permaculture actually, but uh, yeah, it kind of takes a lot of time. Good books are dangerous when it comes to productivity, but you know, it was raining. I took a day off, um, but the day before that was really fun. Uh, all the ants we got together, and we drove up into the high country up above like five, six thousand feet where the huckleberries grow. Um, so we go pick up huckleberries. Uh, on the way up, we made an emergency stop because we actually saw some ripe thimbleberries, which are really delicious. Hey, so we're up in the mountains above the lab right now. We're going berry picking, and uh, actually just stopped along the side of the road because there's. This patch of ripe thimbleberries and these things are so delicious but you gotta eat them right off the plant. I'll try to find a ripe one for you but I think they've all been eaten. Here's one. Oh there's one. One? <laughs> there's four. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> we did that and then we went and we uh, got up to our huckleberry patch and started picking. Um, it's real kind of slow going, not not super easy to pick, the real low plants, but um, I just figured out I could just sit down and pick everything around me and then kind of scoot down the hill and sit back down and pick everything around me again, kind of like a bear might do. So I figure imitating the bears when it comes to berries is a good idea. So maybe about four hours, I picked three, four hours, one and a half of these. The berries in there, they're really good. These are some of the best berries I've ever tasted. Um, that's why they're quite expensive if you buy them at the food farmer's market. So I got about one and a half of those things and then uh, I got back to Ant Village and still felt like picking berries so I went and picked Saskatoons. And I got one of these in about 45 minutes. They're a lot bigger berries, they're on bushes that are head high, a lot easier to pick, a lot quicker but uh, they're good too, they're both good. Um, I might try to make some jam out of them. I'm going to dry a few of them, I'm going to try a trick in my truck which I uh, kind of Got the idea from Evan and Kai, so let me show you that. So I just got me some uh, window screen, and put it on top of some chicken wire for support, and I set it inside the dashboard of my truck here. This red one's broken, so it's not really moving anywhere. Might as well use it as a dehydrator. Um, Evan and Kai have been doing this for a few weeks and drying uh, Saskatoons, and it's been working pretty well. So these huckleberries have been here for a few hours. It's starting to dry out a little bit, so hopefully I can do that with the rest of mine, or make some jam, preserve those a little bit. And I have been able to get a little bit of work done today already, even though it's getting hot now, but I started working on the uh, retaining wall on this side of my house. Took off the uh, tarp that was covering this side, and took off a few of the boards. I may actually end up taking off all these boards, because I might do like a cob infill in this house. I'm not sure yet, but I had to remove some of them, put these walls in. So I got these two in. Um, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna replace this one on the bottom. I think it's too thin for all the weight it's gonna hold. But I got another one cut. I'm just waiting for other people to be around so they can help me carry it because it's too heavy for me. But it's getting close. Once I get the fill, uh, I just gotta build another one over here on this side, and I'll be that much closer to burying my house. Good morning. 
I uh, had a good productive day yesterday. It's early in the morning now. I'm about to get ready to go to Missoula uh, with my neighbor Steve. But I just wanted to show you what we got done yesterday. Um, first off, Steve ordered a, uh, a whole unit of lumber from the local lumber yard so he could get started on his woodshed. You see him working on it over there. Or that's Gabe actually, but um, yeah, so I got the lumber to work on that. I went and helped him pick them up and kind of split it up between a few of the people who chipped in on it. Um, and he got to work on his woodshed over there, him and Evan and Gabe, his sons. Um, that was cool to see that starting to go together. Um, I was working over here in my own house. We got pretty far on this. Got these, this bottom one replaced in here with a little bit thicker, thicker pole. And I got both of these just kind of in position and ready to go. I also got, because uh, Steve had a 3 8 drill bit, I was able to put my lag bolts in. And so I got these, these three things lag bolted in. I use lag bolts here instead of rebar because I figure if I have to take these apart, I don't want to have to be cutting rebar inside my house. I can just pull these lag bolts out. But that's what I got going on yesterday what I got done yesterday it was a good day so got up early today gonna go to Missoula try to get some casters for the chainsaw mill and get moving on so as you can see I'm in Missoula right now came here with Steve and his son Gabe and uh, we just went swimming that building over there turns out Missoula has an awesome year-round indoor water park it's got water slides and lanes and a hot tub and hot showers so it was really good. He's got the right idea. Now we're just going to stop at the good food store, get some more food, and head on back home to the ant village. Hey, so I've been working hard on the uh, chainsaw mill ever since we got back from Missoula uh, with the new hardware I got. And this is what I uh, came up with. This will be the first part. Um, I needed a way to attach the saw to the mill. So thankfully I had this big quarter inch or 3 16 plate from an earlier project. And it's got some uh, hardware a few days ago. Um, and pretty much attaching the saw to the plate at the points where you'd hold it. So the saw is still free to move around as it normally would on its little suspension system. Um, and then I had, Jim gave me an old bicycle tire and some tubes. And I attached those to the plate so that the saw can sit on something, on some rubber. So. It doesn't just vibrate itself off of the plate and uh, it's a little cushion so seems to be pretty pretty solid on there um, I might attach another piece down here on the handle a whole little better but it seems like that'll work so this is gonna sit on top of a carriage that rolls up and down this this uh, rail here and the uh, the bar and the chain will stick out sideways and cut through the log so Next I gotta build the carriage, probably get to doing that tomorrow. Hey, so uh, I had a bit of a late start this morning, um, couldn't sleep last night. I don't know if it was the full moon or what, but I was just uh, thinking a bunch of stuff before I went to sleep. But I did figure out what I'm going to do to uh, finish my house, so that's one good thing. Anyway, uh, I'm out here today. As you can see behind me here, is what we call the solar leviathan. And uh, this is a portable solar trailer that Paul built for his operations up here. Um, I don't know how many watts it is, but basically it's a whole solar array, batteries, transformers, uh, inverters, circuit breakers, everything inside there. Right now it's uh, providing power to the Cooper cabin over there as well as they charge their bad boy buggies and the Polaris uh, electric vehicle on this. But today I've been using it for my welder. And what I've been using my welder for is building this, my chainsaw mill attachment. And so this crazy looking contraption right here. Um, this is what will roll up and down the uh, the wooden rail that I built over there. And so 
Um, I've done a lot of MIG welding before, but all I got right now is this little arc welder, um, stick welder kind of thing. And so, you know, not the cleanest welds I've ever done, but they work. It's sturdy. It'll hold together. And then I just uh, bolted on all these casters. And give me one second, I'll show you how it works. All right, so I've got this kind of little mock-up of the rail that I built there. My uh, plot, as you can see, uh, fits on the casters in here. And uh, can move the rail back and forth, or it'll actually be the this carriage moving back and forth. But that plate that I attached my saw to will attach to the top of this, and hopefully we will have a chainsaw mill ready to go. So. Uh, I've been working at this all day, so I'm pretty tired. I'm going to go back and make myself some food and um, see if I can't mount this up. Well, it's the end of the day. It's about 8 o'clock. I'm working all day and I'm really tired. You can see the sun's going down there behind me. But uh, I'm tired, but I got a good sense of satisfaction because uh, I had an idea in my mind and worked hard and made it come about. And here it is. This is the... Uh, Chainsaw mill concept I've come up with. So I've got the uh, carriage which I welded up today and the mounting plate which I did yesterday. Attach those together with little bolts here. I might replace those with uh, wing nuts to make it easier to take on and off. But sits on there pretty, pretty straight, pretty tight. Um, I gotta do a few little adjustments just to make the blade level this way, but should be able to do that. And uh, it slides up and down the rail pretty good. A little taut, that's how I want it to be so it doesn't just roll off. And... Whew. So, feels good to get that done. I've been wanting to make one of these for a while. Um, it helped me a lot getting the uh, all the, the bracing done on my retaining walls over here. So now, hopefully, see how fast it goes, but hopefully I can cut my own two by two by tens or two by whatever's um, and and get some good progress going in my house I, I got this week I got almost all of my retaining wall frames up you can see that one in the background there and uh, got some good progress going so that feels good feels good um, there's still a lot more work to do before the house is even ready to bury but you know one day at a time one step at a time so I'm um, glad you guys are following along and I'm I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Um, if you like what I'm doing here, always go out to patreon.com slash jessegrimes um, and you can support the videos with a per video donation. Um, there's links below in the details section for that. Um, I'm also still looking for volunteers, uh, woofers, gappers out here to help with the project. So there's links for that in the information as well. So uh, once again, thank you all for watching and thanks for joining me here in the Ant Village. See you next time.